<laughs> I'm going to show you how to use your smartphone in your GCSE and A-level physics lessons. I really hope you're going to like this one because I, if you're like me, you're pretty attached to one of these and they can be really useful tools for your physics learning and your physics experiments as well. I really like this one. This is very, very simple. Um, it's called Physics Toolbox, okay? And, or, and this is Physics Toolbox Suite. It's an Android one again, but there must be some alternatives out there for iPhone users, it's probably on there as well. It actually uses a lot of the power of the phone. Um, it uses it to do the various different data logging that you can. You know when you turn the screen, it's actually got an accelerometer. So a lot of them use the accelerometer. So this one measures basically um, forces in number of Gs. So if I drop the phone, then you can see that there's a big spike there as g-force kicks in and you get a much higher, well actually dropping the phone will be g-force but it's when I catch it that I actually get the spike, that's very very interesting. Physics, I know that but I can imagine you attaching that to some trolleys, I could even imagine you riding around a small roller coaster with that in your pocket or something like that. Um, a linear accelerometer is very good as well and this is just showing you acceleration which obviously force is proportional to acceleration and you can see how uh, the different dimensions, you've got x, y and z which is um, X, I'm guessing, Z is into the phone, X is gonna be left to right, and Y is gonna be up and down on the phone screen. So if I move up and down, it's the, Z, it's the Y one that goes up and down, it's just for your interest. You can record it on all of these ones, stop it, save that as a whatever you like, and send it to yourself however you wish to. And that'll come out as a CSV, rather like the tracker that we had last week. Gyroscope as well is going to tell us about how there's about rotational forces. Okay, barometer is pressure, but this one doesn't have a barometer, so you can't do that. Um, roller coaster, I think, is designed specifically to kind of measure the forces you're going around on a roller coaster um, and record that. Proximeter, the proximeter is quite a, an interesting one. It, it uses the front sensor, which is essentially is what the, how the phone knows when it's closed or not. <laughs> Okay, so that, that's what it is. And it's just literally, is there something there or not? I can't really think of an idea for that off the top of my head. The ruler is you place something on the screen and you can measure between it, okay? So it gives you a reading in um, three decimal places of a centimeter. Very, well, should be very accurate. Magnetometer is quite interesting. It actually can measure a magnetic field. Now, I recommend you don't get very large magnets too close to your smartphone but actually it's a good one for understanding that magnetic fields might be different sizes depending on how close or far away from magnets you are. Okay, and if you're, certainly if you're doing work with just electromagnets, okay, interested in mag field in your physics lessons, this would be a good one just for understanding how they change with distance or seeing if you have more coils or longer bits of wire how those magnetic fields are. But work with low magnetic fields with this, guys and girls. Don't stick it next to a major magnet, I would suggest. Compass, well, I think most phones actually have a compass, but there's one on this as well. Um, GPS, again, and I'm not going to actually show you this because eventually once it's got it, it will actually, you'll be able to work out where I am, um, which I'm, I'm okay with, really, but uh, there we go. Um, so that is actually the raw data, if you like, from the GPS satellites. So that might be quite an interesting one. Pitch, roll, and azimuth, okay, are about the orientation of the phone in space, because it's got two accelerometers, so it can work out exactly its position in space, rather like a Wiimote. Um, Inclometer, um, same thing, that's what I've just done. Light meter, light meter is using the light sensor for the flash of your camera. So if I cover it up, you see it goes right down. Okay, there might be one on the front as well. Yeah, it's actually, this is actually using the front camera as a light meter, okay? Just, it's not using it as a camera, it's using it as a light meter, a very clever way to use that. Sound meter is obviously just using the microphone to uh, figure out a decibel uh, level of sound at that point. Um, now, if you are musical, you'll be liking this. It's essentially, it's a, it's a tuner. I'm not musical really at all, unfortunately. I like music a lot, but I, I can't play it. Um, and it gives you a reading of the frequency down there as well. Very nice. I like that. Tone generator is like the opposite, so I can actually ask it 
to play me a tune or a certain tone of whatever I pick. Lots of times when you might be doing that when you're investigating waves or as a musical tone. I missed out multi-record and oscilloscope, so I'll go back to that. Multi-record is if you want it to actually record data from several of the loggers there, so you just tick them all off and it will record the whole thing and put it all into one big CSV file. You think very carefully before you do that, otherwise you're not really going to know what you're looking at. Um, oscilloscope, that is, it. again, it's using the microphone, can you see that? But it's showing it as a waveform. If I try and get, a, you, could, you could investigate a tone with that. <laughs> see different pitches, you know, how, how they change as well. It'd be quite an interesting thing. Uh, color generator, uh, if you were investigating light, how that, it just shows you, you can actually change just do a perfect color. Maybe you're looking through a spectroscope or something like that. Um, and then lastly, a strobo. Okay, strobos are essentially flashing light. I don't think they've quite got this working. Hopefully by the upgrade, they'll be able to do that. I think my phone's probably not wanting it to work as a very high frequency strobo because um, you'll probably burn out the LED if you did that for too long and certainly run down the battery. So. Uh, We'll certainly see that one's a work in progress, but strobe lights are very, very useful when we're analyzing motion. You may have seen those uh, photos of the same ball 20 times in a row, but that's essentially strobe light photography. You may have seen sportsmen having their being captured um, in different positions or a ballet dancer or something like that. Very, very nice. It's strobe light photography. Okay, um, I hope that helps. It's a really useful app that I, again, I think the accelerometers are really good and it's really good for seeing kind of what's happening with forces and but I like some of the other functions there and it's just about having that ready to go and thinking, do you know what, actually that would be really useful for this situation here. We can make a quick comparison, get some really good data and we can actually there, therefore get, um, get a lot of interesting conclusions worked out quite quickly just with something that we've got in our pocket every day. Thank you for watching Gorilla Physics. Please do like, share and subscribe. That really helps me be more useful to more people. Also, please go ahead and check out Gorilla Chemistry and Gorilla Biology. You can expect the same sorts of things, past paper questions and videos to help you understand topics. Thanks once again for watching.